Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and I'm here to talk about how game week 18 went and then what my plans are for our first double game week, which is game week 19. And it's been the most difficult week for me to try and work out what subs to do because there are so many choices. So let's have a look at this. We start by looking at which team got the greatest score in the Midnight Mule FPL mini league. And this week, the team was Geek FC by Erep. And I might be saying that wrong. So apologies if I am. I often say the names wrong, I think. They got 73 points. The global average was 48 points. They triple captained Haaland. And it wasn't Haaland's greatest week, but it could have been. They're at home to Everton, so I can see why you think it would be a good score. So the triple captain gave Haaland 18 points. Tony got 12, so that's 30 between them. Martinelli and Odegaard got 23 between them. Pope and Trippier got 14 between them. So overall, a very good score. I'm sure there's some disappointment with some of the scores there. Perisic won, Castagna won, De Bruyne won, Mitrovic zero. But that's just the luck with the roll of the dice. And then on the bench, the only one who scored points really was Andreas with five. But I don't think anybody would rightly choose Andreas over any of the seven players that were put out there. So well done on the 73. Very good. Top of the league is Jacob Eriksson still with Skog's Clanton IF. Currently on 11.34. This is how their team was looking for game week 18. Captain Harland, 6 points, became 12 points. Martinelli, 10. Rashford Andreas got 5 each. Trippier, 8. Shaw, 9. Shaw was somebody I was looking to get in, but I decided not to. It would have because... Man United had three easy-looking fixtures, so of course there's a good chance for clean sheets, but I went for three attacking players instead. Obviously, in retrospect, Shaw was a good shout, but there's one more easy fixture left, so I may still be all right. But well done for being top of the league there. And no points on the bench worth mentioning, so got the bench right this week. As for me, I'm stuck in 42, but that's okay. 42 is an important number if you know the uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So there I am. And my score's 10-21. This is how my team looked. I was saved a bit by Bueno coming on for Cancelo. And Bueno got six points. So that was nice. Fernandez finally got his assist for six. I say finally. Because I was listening to the match on the radio. And it sounded like Fernandez should have the assist. But it wasn't coming up. And I checked online on the BBC site. Just at the live scores. And that had him as an assist. And it was ages before the website was actually updated and gave it to him. So that was nice. So uh, De, Bruyne, De Bruyne got one. Very disappointing. But he actually kind of played all right. But Man City are going through a bit of a rut just now. I went for De Bruyne over Salah. De Bruyne last three games has now done nothing. But he's still an excellent player. And I still think of him as a bit of a, uh, a cheat code for Man City. So I'd be reluctant to uh, ever get rid of him. But it doesn't mean I won't. So that was my team. Martinelli 10, Rashford 5 coming off the bench. Nothing amazing at all, but uh, I got above average, so that was nice. Enketi was on the bench. I did want to play Enketia, but there was none of those other players I've got there, those outfield players, that I wanted to put on the bench. So I ended up putting Enketi on the bench. You've got eight points, but at least I've still got him in my team. So I've got 59 overall, so just inside the 1.8 for the game week. Overall, I'm just inside the 1.3 million. And that's the second green arrow in a row. I'm expecting a red arrow this week, though, because I know a lot of teams are going for the double game week quite hard. And so they're going to be able to field more players than me, effectively. But that's OK. It's, it's one of those things. I'll, I'll go for another double game week, I think, quite hard. So I'm now 11 points off the 1 million spot. <laughs> I had a double take when I saw this 389 subscribers. <laughs> Thank you very much. If you like this sort of thing, please do make sure you subscribe and likes and comments are good too. So in the uh, Content Creators League, which I'm not officially in, but if you go to FPL Game Week and you look at the Content Creators League, it shows you where you would be. FPL Raptor is currently top of that. And Harry, someone else who I watch their videos, I like his stuff a lot, is down in fifth at the moment. I'm all the way down in 51st, and the only good thing to say about that is I'm beating FPL mate, but I'm only three points ahead of him, and I'm expecting him to overtake me this week, because again, he's going for the double game week harder than I am. So I may be down to 52nd next week, or maybe lower. But we'll see, I might do all right, you never know. 
So this is how my team looked, right? So I thought it'd be useful to try and explain my thinking about why I'm not going very hard on the double game week. But I did think about it and I looked at the possibilities. This is my current team. Now, at the beginning of uh, the restart, so for game week 17, 18, 19, I brought in three Man United attackers, Fernandez, Martial and Rashford. I think Fernandez is brilliant and with Ronaldo gone, I was thinking maybe he's going to get better. Obviously, Martial, it seems uh, that Ten Hag really likes him as a striker. So if he stays fit, I thought he was worth having. And everyone was getting Rashford in. So I got him and he's actually been performing the best. Now, this is the third of their three good game weeks. They're at home to Bournemouth. So I really don't want to be getting rid of any of those. Now, Man City... <laughs> Man City are Man City. Everyone's got Haaland. I think De Bruyne is brilliant, albeit he's not been good the last three weeks. Cancelo's not played the last couple of weeks. We came on two weeks ago. But Man City haven't actually been very good. So I'm realistically, optimistically, slightly hopeful he's actually going to start playing again because Man City do seem to be better with Cancelo. I don't know if it's some internal bust up with Pep or what's going on. So I've got three Man City players. I know they're away to Chelsea this week, but... They've got the potential, depending on certain results, of having a double game week in game week 20 and in game week 23. And the games in between are Wolves and Tottenham. Tottenham is shocking. So absolutely want to keep hold of Man City players if we think they're going to play. So I can't sub them out. Almron and Trippier, Newcastle. Newcastle are brilliant. Trippier is highly owned. Almron's still very good. I know he didn't get a return last week. But I can't get rid of either of those two. Martinelli and Enketia, Arsenal. Arsenal are flying high. Jesus is injured. They're just getting points week after week. So I can't get rid of them. Now I've already got the Chelsea goalkeeper who has got a double game week. So obviously I'm not going to sub off, make changes to my goalkeepers. Dunk is a cheapish defender. And at the beginning of game week 17, it looked like Brighton had a good chance of having double game weeks coming up the next few weeks. And they still might. So I want to keep hold of Dunk. There's no point subbing him out if in a week or two I'm going to be subbing him back in again. Bueno's an enabler. He's 3.9 million. And at the moment he is playing. So I kind of want to keep him because he lets me do other things. So that just leaves James. We know James is out for maybe four weeks or so. So the obvious safe replacement you'd have thought would be Aspilicueta. And the reason I put his name up here is because I knew there's no way from memory I'd be able to say his name right. I've probably still not got it right, but it's an awful lot better than if I didn't have it to read. Anyway, so James. Now these are the four game weeks that James are likely to miss. So yes, they've got this double game week here and then they're at home to Palace and then they're away to Liverpool. So that's what Chelsea are doing. Apart from this double game week, it might be that Chelsea aren't going to get a lot of points anyway. And if I did get in Asper... Well, let's see, I can't even say his name. <laughs> if I did get in Asper oh, it must be an Aspie thing for me, eh? If I got him in, I would only have him for four weeks probably, and then he'd be a part-timer and maybe off again. I know I could get another Chelsea defender. But the chances are, if James does come back, people are going to buy him anyway. So I don't mind too much keeping hold of James. That is a possibility for me. But I don't particularly care for Chelsea. I don't think Chelsea are great generally. And apart from this double game week, I'm not that bothered about them. So not necessarily getting rid of James. So as you can see on the screen, these are the players that I'm happy to get rid of for a double game week. Fulham. So Fulham have obviously got a double game week. So here it is. They're away to Leicester and home to Chelsea. It's conceivable that they don't score at all in those two games. Leicester are very good defensively. I know they let in two, a, two in at Anfield at the weekend, but Liverpool didn't score. It was just a couple of very unfortunate bounces for Leicester. So Leicester could absolutely keep a clean sheet. Chester, are, Chester. Chelsea, who are as good as Chester. Chelsea, they could keep a clean sheet against Fulham. So what I'm saying is it's not an absolute banker that, uh, the Fulham players are going to do well in these two weeks. They might do, but it's not worth breaking my team over. But then the next three games are away to Newcastle, home to Tottenham. Tottenham are shocking at the moment. And away to Chelsea. I'd want to be holding Fulham players for that. 
So when I looked at the transfers and considered Fulham players, I then discounted the Fulham players thinking, no, nope, don't want them. If Mitrovic was completely fit and wasn't on four yellow cards, then maybe I'd been a lot more tempted. But there is a risk that he's not even going to get a double game week if he gets a yellow card in the Leicester game. And he doesn't seem completely fit, although he's still very good when he's unfit. So that's Fulham out. However, these are my transfer thoughts. I thought I'd let you know. Option one is do nothing. If I do nothing, then I'm actually burning a transfer. But I've made the mistake before thinking, oh, I've got a transfer. I should really do something or I lose it. And it wasn't worth doing. My team, in my mind, is okay. So I don't want to do a change just for the sake of it because I can. So in my mind, that is a valid option. Option number two, I simply take James and swap him. In this image, I've got Cucurella. It could be another Chelsea defender. And it just means I'm gambling on that they're going to do all right in this double game week. And because I have two free transfers, so I'm going to lose one of them. That does kind of seem sensible-ish, except I'm probably going to want James back in another four or five weeks. So this is booking in a transfer in the future if I do this. Something else I looked at, Martial's only got one more game week where I want him and then he's got two difficult fixtures. I think it's Arsenal and Man City, so I'm fine to lose him. Absolutely fine to get rid of Martial after that. So I can swap De Bruyne, who's away to Chelsea, and Martial, and bring in Sterling and Havertz, who obviously have a double game week. And I suspect those two players on the right there, the two Chelsea players, will comfortably outscore whatever De Bruyne and Martial do this week, given they've got a double game week. Option number four, which would cost me four points, is take De Bruyne, Martial and the injured James and bring in Sterling, Havertz and Trent. So although Liverpool's defence isn't great, he is very good at attacking and he may get some clean sheets. So I was very, very tempted by this one, to be honest. And again, those four on the right, I think will score considerably more, even more than four points more than the the two on the left because James won't be playing. Game week 19, this is transfer option number five and this is what I've actually done so far. Take out De Bruyne and bring in Sterling, but we won't tell Kevin we've done this and he'll be busy down in London so he may not notice. And then before he looks at my team, next week I take out Bruno and bring De Bruyne back. So I only intended to have Bruno for three weeks unless he was absolutely brilliant. And he's been okay but not brilliant. So I will probably still get rid of him. However, Ben Krellin is predicting that United could get a double game week in game week 20. If that happens, then I'll probably take Sterling out for De Bruyne. So there's still no harm done. We don't need to tell Kevin that ever happened. So that's my team at the moment. I know there's a few hours before the deadline. So that means I've got Kepper in goal with a double game week. Then at the back, Trippier away to Arsenal. I've seen quite a few content creators that are putting Trippier on the bench and playing an Arsenal defender instead. There's no way I would do that. Trippier gets far too many returns and chances of getting assists. Arsenal do let in goals. Uh, so I I couldn't put Trippier on my bench. No chance. And then Cancelo. I know they're away to Chelsea. I know he may not play, but he may play. So I want to be playing him. And then I've put James there because I like doing that sort of thing. Obviously, he won't actually get to play. And then at the back, I've got... Sorry, in the middle, I've got Sterling with his double game week. Rashford at home to Bournemouth. Martinelli at home to Newcastle. Fernandes at home to Bournemouth. At the front, I've got Enketia at home to Newcastle. Martial at home to Bournemouth. And Haaland away to Chelsea. Then on the bench, I've got Ward at home to Fulham. Almron away. So I don't like putting Almron on my bench... But looking at the other outfield players, he's kind of the one that I'd be least surprised at if there were no returns. Dunk would be the defender away to Everton coming in. Now, there's an interesting phenomenon. Phenomenon. I can't even say these words. <laughs> I'm awful sometimes with words. But there's something called giant killing. And when a team does better than you'd expect it against a big team, the next team they tend to underperform. And this isn't just uh, an old wives' tale. It actually seems to be true. And Everton drew with Man City at the Etihad last weekend. So there's a reasonable chance they're going to slightly underperform this week. Brighton are a good team. So I don't mind playing Dunk. 
because I think there's a reasonable chance he will get a clean sheet. Obviously, there's a remote chance he's going to get a return from an attacking return. But a clean sheet is not impossible. And then that's Bueno away at Villa. He's my last sub. Villa seem to have turned the corner now with their new manager. Uh, so uh, I think Villa are a good side. I was very tempted. Another option I looked at for transfers was to bring in Luca Dean for James. And I think that's perfectly OK. I think he could well be quite good for the next few weeks. So that's my team as it stands. Now, regarding the captain, I'm not 100% sure, but I think I might put it on Sterling. It's on Sterling at the moment. He's got the old mule hat. But I am expecting Haaland, of course, to get at least one goal. He may get two or three. But a lot of content creators and people I'm up against, I know, are going to be going for a double game week player to captain. So I think a lot of people are going for Mitrovic. Some may go for Andreas. Otherwise, quite a few are going for Mount. So if Haaland gets a really big score, a lot of the people that I'm measuring myself against wouldn't have captained Haaland anyway. So I can afford a bit to go for Sterling. Obviously, if Mount does well and Sterling does nothing, then it's not so good. So there we have my Game Week 19 plans. That was a... Oh, it's been difficult thinking about this. Now, I'm... I'm not actually going to be in front of the computer when it comes to the deadline. I've got to pop to Nottingham very shortly. If you see me in Nottingham or someone looks like me, wave and say hello and just assume it's me. And if I see you, I'll wave back. Um, and yeah, so I'm not going to get back. But I, I won't be back by four. But I think I may be able to get to you. There's a little service station, you talk to So I might pull in there if I get there before four and just quickly go on my phone see if there's any late breaking news and I need to do something. So there we have it. Oh, so if you see me in your dogster, <laughs> wave as well. If you see someone looks like me, just assume it's me and wave. Um, thank you very much for watching. All the best for Game Week 19. <laughs>